Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we've heard, children face all sorts of dangers when they use social media, from mental health harms to sexual exploitation, even trafficking. Sex trafficking is a serious problem in my home state of Hawaii, especially for Native Hawaiian victims. That social media platforms are being used to facilitate this trafficking, as uh, well as uh, the creation and distortion, distribution of C-scam is deeply concerning, but it's happening. For example, several years ago, a military police officer stationed in Hawaii was sentenced to 15 years in prison for producing C-scam as part of his online exploitation of a minor female. He began communicating with this 12-year-old girl through Instagram. He then used Snapchat to send her sexually explicit photos and to solicit such photos from her. He later used these photos to blackmail her. And just last month, the FBI arrested a neo-Nazi cult leader in Hawaii who lured victims to his Discord server. He used that server to share images of extremely disturbing child sex sexual abuse material interspersed with neo-Nazi imagery. Members of his child exploitation and hate group are also present on Instagram, Snapchat, X, and TikTok, all of which they use to recruit potential members and victims. In many cases, including the ones I just mentioned, your companies played a role in helping law enforcement investigate these offenders. But by the time of the investigation, so much damage had already been done. The hearing is about how to keep children safe online. And we've listened to all of your testimony to seemingly uh, impressive safeguards for young users. You try to limit the time that they spend. You require parental consent. Do you have all of these tools? Yet trafficking and exploitation of minors online and on your platforms continues to be rampant. Nearly all of your companies make your money through advertising, specifically by selling the attention of your users. Your product is your users. As a Meta product designer wrote in an email, quote, young ones are the best ones. You want to bring people to your service young and early, end quote. In other words, hook them early. Research published last month by Harvard School of Public Health estimates that SNAP makes an astounding 41% of its revenues by addressing to users under 18. With TikTok, it's 35%. Seven of the 10 largest Discord servers attracting many paying users are for games used primarily by teens, by children. All this is to say that social media companies, yours and others, make money by attracting kids to your platforms. But ensuring safety doesn't make money, it costs money. If you are going to continue to attract kids to your platforms, you have an obligation to ensure they are safe on their platforms. Because the current situation is untenable, that is why we're having this hearing. But, to ensure safety for our children, that costs money. Your companies cannot continue to profit off young users, only to look the other way when those users, our children, are harmed online. We've had a, a lot of comments about the Section 230 protections. And I think we are definitely heading in that direction. And some of the five bills that we have already passed out of this committee talks about limiting the, the, the liability protections for you. Last November, this is for Mr. Zuckerberg. Last November, the, the Privacy Technology Subcommittee heard testimony from Arturo Behar in response to one of my questions about how to ensure that social media companies focus more on child safety. He said, he said and, I, and I am paraphrasing a little bit, uh, Mr. Bihar said, what will change their behavior is at the moment that Mark Zuckerberg declares earnings. And these, are, these earnings have to be declared to the SEC. So he has to say, last quarter we made $34 billion, and the next thing he has to say is, how many teens experienced unwanted sexual advances 
on its platform. Mr. Zuckerberg, will you commit to reporting measurable child safety data on your quarterly earnings reports and calls? Senator, it's a, it's a good question. We actually already have a quarterly report that we issue and do a call to answer questions for how we're enforcing our community standards that includes not just the child safety um, issues and, so and metrics. So is that a yes? We, we have a separate call that we do this on, but we've led but the industry. I think industry that, that the, you, know, you, you have to re report your earnings to the SEC. Will you report to them this kind of uh, data? And by numbers, by the way, because Senator Coons said, and others yes. have said, percentages don't really tell the full story. Will you report to the SEC the number of teens? And sometimes you don't even know whether they're, they're teens or not because they just claim to be adults. Will you report the number of underage children on your platforms who experience unwanted CSAM and other kinds of uh, uh, messaging that they that, that harm them. Will you commit to citing those numbers to the SEC when you make your quarterly report? Well, well, Senator, I'm not sure it would make as much sense to include it in the SEC filing, but we file it publicly <laughs> so that way everyone can see this. And we, I'd be happy to follow up and talk about what specific metrics. I think the specific things that some of the ones that you just mentioned around underage people on our services, we don't allow people under the age of 13 on our service. So if we find anyone who's under the age of 13, we remove them from our service. Now, I'm not saying that people don't lie and that there aren't yes, anyone who's under the age of 13 who's using it, but I'm not gonna be able to, we're not going to be able to count how many people there are because fundamentally if we identify that someone is underage, we remove them from the I service. think that's really important that we get actual numbers because these are real human beings. That's why all these parents and others are here because each time that a person, a young person is exposed to this kind of unwanted material and they get hooked, it is a danger to that individual. So I'm hoping that you are saying that you do report this kind of information to, if not the SEC, that it is made public. I think I'm hearing that, yes, you do. So. Yes, yeah, Senator, I think we report okay. more publicly on our enforcement than any other company in the industry. And we're very supportive of transparency I, measures. Okay. And, I am and I running out of time, Mr. Zuckerberg, but so um, I, I will follow up with what, what exactly it is that you do report. Again, for you, when Meta automatically places young people's accounts, and you testified to this, on the most restrictive privacy and content sensitivity sessions, and yet teens are able to opt out of these safeguards. Isn't that right? Yeah. It's not mandatory that they remain on these uh, settings. They can opt out. Senator, yes, we, we, we default teens into a private account so that they have a private and restricted experience, but some teens want to be creators and want to have content that they nope. share more broadly, and I don't think that that's something that should just blanketly be banned. Uh, why not? I think, uh, I think it should be mandatory that they, not, that they remain on, on the more restrictive settings. We Senator, have to I think start that there's, somewhere. there's, I mean, a lot of teens create amazing things, and I think with the right supervision and, 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 and parenting and, and controls, <laughs> I think that that's like, I don't think that that's the type of thing that you want to just not allow anyone to be able to do it. I think you want to make it so that... My time, um, my time is up, but I, I have to say that there is an argument that you all make for every single thing that we are proposing. And I, I share the, the concern that I have about the blanket limitation on liabilities that we provide, all of you. And I think that that has to change. And that is on us, on Congress, to make that change. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.